In this lesson, we'll discuss the quantum mechanical model of the atom. This is our current model of the atom. First, let's start with a brief overview. The quantum mechanical model of the atom treats electrons as waves, and these waves have a certain amount of energy or quantized energy. And instead of the orbits that we see in the Bohr model, we're going to talk about electrons being found in regions of space around the nucleus called atomic orbitals. It is impossible to determine the exact position of the electrons or how they are moving. So we're going to talk about the probability of electrons being within these atomic orbitals. So what exactly is an atomic orbital? It's a region or a space around the nucleus of the atom where an electron is likely to be found about 90% of the time. We can describe orbitals uh, in terms of their shape, size, and energy. But an orbital is just a space, just a region around the nucleus where the electrons are likely to be located. Orbitals don't tell us anything about the movement of the electrons. There are four different orbital shapes or sublevels. S, P, D, and F. They are shown here in this diagram. The S orbital is a sphere-shaped orbital. The nucleus would be in the center there. The P orbital is a dumbbell-shaped orbital. The D orbital has a, kind of a flower shape and the F orbitals are much harder to describe in terms of their shape. So we've been talking about the Bohr model of the atom and now we're introducing the quantum mechanical model of the atom. How are they similar? Both will use uh, quantum numbers to describe the energy of the electron. So both of them have energy levels. In the Bohr model for hydrogen, that one electron was in the ground state or N equals one and when the electron was not in the ground state it was in an excited state so n greater than one so the electrons had more energy and they were farther away from the nucleus we can still use these terms ground state and excited state to talk about electrons within the quantum mechanical model however not all electrons can be in n equals one but we can talk about electrons being in their ground state in terms of having uh, the lowest energy levels possible and then when electrons move out of the ground state to higher energy levels, we can still talk about them being in an excited state in the quantum mechanical model. Certain orbital shapes or sublevels are allowed in each energy level. In the first energy level, only S. In the second, S and P. In the third, S, P, and D. And in the fourth, S, P, D, and F. All s orbitals will have the same shape, the sphere shape, whether it's in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth energy level. However, the energy of the electrons is different, so the size of the orbital is different. So a 1s orbital will be sphere shaped, and so will a 2s, but a 2s orbital will be larger than a 1s. The electrons in the 2s orbital have more energy and can be farther away from the nucleus. Each orbital shape or sublevel is going to consist of one or more orbitals. So for the s orbital, there's just one. For p's, there are three. d's, five. And f's, seven. Each individual orbital can hold maximum two electrons. And so two electrons in the one orbital for S, six electrons in the P orbital, so there are three orbitals times two, that's six electrons. Five orbitals times two electrons each is 10 electrons total for D and for F. Seven orbitals times two electrons each is 14 electrons. I just mentioned that each orbital can hold two electrons. This is called the Pauli exclusion principle. Each one of those electrons 
would be spinning in an opposite direction. So like clockwise and counterclockwise. You can have two electrons in the same orbital in the same energy level, but what makes them different is their spin. So those are the main points of the quantum mechanical model. Now we can put it all together and write an electron configuration.